Okay, and welcome back students who are taking uh, financial accounting. And in this series of videos um, for Chapter 7, we're working on the theory uh, for which involves cash and receivables. And this is the fourth video. Um, and let me jump down here. Okay, so um, in the last two videos, we had talked about the direct write-off method versus the allowance method. Um, this here is going to be a relatively short uh, video because all I'm going to do is just uh, take a quick look at the differences between the journal entries for the two methods. Now, in the last two videos for the direct write-off method and the allowance method, I just talked about the theory, the process, the concept of the methods. You know, the direct write-off method is relatively simple in that when you determine an account is bad, you write it off directly. But the allowance method is um, a lot more complicated in that you're always estimating. And then when you actually decide that that customer is bad, instead of writing off directly to bad debt expense, you're going to um, make the adjusting entry to the allowance for uncollectible account or doubtful account because you're adjusting, your original adjusting entry is different. So this here is to, um, you know, we're going to take a, just a quick look at, you know, these two methods. So using the direct write-off method, you know, it says period end adjusting entry. There is none required because when, you know, as soon as you determine that the customer um, is, is what we call swill, meaning it's bad, you know, it's bad and it's no longer any good, you can immediately write it off. You don't have to make adjusting entries. And in order to write it off, as you can see, um, the entry to write off to the customer account is a debit to bad debt expense, and you're crediting the accounts receivable. Remember, um, you know, when a customer buys something, you know, you're debiting accounts receivable and you're crediting the sales, right? So that's why you have a credit to write it off because the credit to accounts receivable washes it out, right? Debit and a credit washes it out. I mean, I have my accounts receivable account here. If I have a debit of 100 and now I'm going to credit for 100, my balance is zero. So that's why you're making that entry that way. All right. Now, um, if the customer decides to uh, pay off the, uh, you know, for whatever reason, like you wrote it off, say, in January, and now it's September and the customer wants to do business with you, um, and says, hey, I'll pay off my bad debt so long as I can, you know, continue to, to buy your product or, you know, you perform the services. Um, what you need to do is, you, you know, as you can see, you need to uh, reverse that entry that you use to write off. Notice that this entry and this entry, right, these are the exact opposite. It's a reversing entry. So you're putting the accounts receivable back on the books and you're taking it out of the uh, bad debt expense. And then, of course, when the customer pays the cash, you know, that would be the same entry that you would make whenever someone is paying cash on account. So you want to um, you, you want to make these, you know, both of these entries. Now, um, if you take a quick look at these entries and I mentioned this before in the bad uh, the direct write off uh, video. Notice that this here is a debit to accounts receivable, and this is a credit to accounts receivable. So in essence, they wash each other out, and all you have here is a credit to bad debt and a debit to cash. So why make two entries? Why not just go and say, ah, oh, I want to uh, debit my cash because they're paying for it, and since I had written it off to bad debt expense, why don't I just credit my bad debt expense um, account? We don't want to do that. I mean, sure, you as the, the business owner or the manager or whatever have you, you know, you know what customer you're dealing with. But outside entities, if you had a CPA come in and audit your books, they won't have any idea. You know, they'll see this entry, but they don't know what customer, it, you know, it affects because you don't have the accounts receivable here with the customer's name on it. Okay. So in order to keep a paper trail, all right, um, you need to actually make both journal entries so that you know you put the uh, transaction back on the books all right so you know who it is and then you um, when they pay it you're going to actually take it off the books again all right but this way you can see that oh yeah john doe 
you know, he bought back in, in October of 2014, you know, so he had a debit to accounts receivable and a credit um, to revenue for $300. Okay. Then in January, all right, um, it's, it's a bad debt. So we're going to write it off bad debt expense and we're going to credit our accounts receivable for the $300. So as you can see, this debit to accounts receivable and this credit to accounts receivable, you put it on, you, you take it off, right? And you're left with the debit to expense and credit to um, the, the revenue account, right? So you've booked your revenue and now you've matched it up with, with the expense and it's completely off the books. Now, if, um, if in September, you know, he wants to come back um, and, you know, pay it. Well, you know, that's what we're going to do. We have to make these two entries down here in order to put the, put it right back on the books and then take it off. And when we do that, you know, what's left is notice that this here is a credit to bad debt expense. Okay. And this here is a debit to bad debt expense. Well, they wash each other out. Right. And so what you're left with is when you uh, make T accounts and you follow all of this along, all you're left with when they actually pay it off is your credit to revenue and your debit to cash, which is your original entry. It's sort of like, you know, doing your accounts receivable. You know, you debit uh, accounts receivable. I'm sorry. You, yeah, you debit accounts receivable, credit revenue. And when they pay it off, you're debiting your cash and you're crediting your accounts receivable. Well, that, that debit to accounts receivable and credit to accounts receivable washes itself off, and that's what you're left with. Well, you're basically doing the exact same thing here, except we've added in the bad debt expense account. You know, we because we had to write it off, you know, it, uh, you know, we're affecting that account. But because they pay it, you know, then we end up having to credit that account, and it washes itself out, so that we're left with the original uh, sale, you know, to revenue and, you know, the payment in cash. Okay. So, uh, you know, work through the T accounts to see, you know, um, I mean, I just did that and I didn't create the T accounts, but, um, go ahead and work through it so that you can see exactly how the money flows through the various accounts. Now, when it comes to the allowance method instead, um, you know, we're not, directly writing off each and every individual customer. So what we're doing is, is at the end of the accounting period, we have to go along and say, is our accounts receivable correct? And if we have say 16,000 in accounts receivable, all right, and we determine that $2,000 of it is bad debt, all right, and let's just call this January, all right? Well, at the end of the accounting period, you know, our accounts receivable isn't right. It's 16,000 because 2,000 is, is we're in bad debt. So our, our net accounts receivable should only be 14,000. Okay. Um, so what we need to do is we need to make an adjusting entry so that, um, our, you know, we know that our uh, net accounts receivable is accurate. And in order to do that, we write off, we make this a, a journal entry and we use the allowance for uncollectible accounts. So we would debit bad debt for 2000 and we would credit the uncollectible for 2000. Right. Um, and that puts our, you know, our accounts receivable where it needs to be now. And I alluded to this at the end of, uh, at the end of the previous video for the allowance method in that if this is January, and now I have in my allowance account a credit of 2000 and my net accounts receivable is 14000 all right well in february if my uh, you know my accounts receivable is now up to say 18000 and i determine that um, out of that 18000 uh, 2500 dollars is bad debt. So my net accounts receivable should be, uh, 15.5, right? Well, I already have $2,000 in my allowance account. I, I don't want to go and just make an entry for 2,500 because that means my allowance account has $4,500 in it. So if I'm looking at, um, 18,000, 
as my accounts receivable less 4500 right now I'm at 135 that's not what my net accounts receivable should be my net accounts receivable is supposed to be 155 so I can't just say okay you know uh, at the end of February I know it's supposed you know I have $2,500 that's going to be bad and that's what I make the entry for no what you do is, is you say okay at the end of February you know at the end of January I know it's you know I have two thousand dollars but at the end of February I'm supposed to have twenty five hundred okay so now to make the adjusting entry at the end of February I have to take the difference of the two in this case here it's five hundred dollars so my entry is going to be for five hundred dollars it's not going to be for the two the full two thousand five hundred dollars okay and that's what we're um, you know that's the period end adjusting entry so just realize that you're always you know you're looking at your accounts receivable whatever that actual amount is you're, you're estimating your uh, write-offs so that you have a net accounts receivable which you believe to be accurate and in order to make your net accounts receivable accurate the amount that you decide to write off to allowance for doubtful account you want to say that should be the balance in the account so I look at the balance that previously was there and I subtract that from what I should have and that's the adjusting journal entry that I end up having to make okay so hopefully um, you understood that and if not you know that's what instructors are here for okay for um, for you to you know call up and we'll walk you through it All right now um, the last part here is um, so if you know if the customer now remember we've we've determined you know what our bad debt is and so when our customer actually you know when we decide that we're going to actually write off that account this is the journal entry we're going to make so that we can get rid of the accounts receivable and the opposite side to that goes to the allowance for uncollectible account it doesn't go to bad debt we already wrote off to bad debt so what we're doing is we're backing off to our allowance account all right in order to make our allowance account more accurate because you know sure in this example here when I, I used January and February notice that my balance would seem to keep on increasing and increasing and increasing all right um, but we don't want that to happen I mean some of this debt you know for this 18,000 right here is bad and at some point in time or the 16,000 at some point in time we're going to actually have to write it off and say it's it doesn't belong on our accounts receivable at all and in order to do that we take it off of our accounts receivable oops uh, sorry about that uh, come on all right let me get there sorry about that technical difficulty oh and that's going to be bad because i lost all of that information but i don't need it um, uh, in order to be able to finish this explanation but the point being is is that we had 16,000 in January or 18,000 in February of actual accounts receivable well when that customer actually um, you know we decide to write that actually off since we've already booked a bad debt um, we put the opposite side we take it off of the accounts receivable and we use the allowance for doubtful account in order to keep our allowance for uh, doubtful account more in line with what it should be and then at the end of the accounting period you know we go back to doing the adjusting entry and whatever that balance is so let's say it was 2000 and then I had decided that I needed 2500 so I made an adjusting entry of 500 in February right because remember this was January right but now let's say um, a customer actually um, you know we decide to actually write that off so I would have um, a debit for a thousand dollars and let's say that was the the bill right the amount so now the balance in the account is fifteen hundred now if we're looking at March and I say oh my allowance for doubtful account should be uh, 1750 well then I need to say okay if the balance is supposed to be 1750 then I have to make an actual adjusting entry of two hundred and fifty dollars because it already took into consideration this 1000 that we actually wrote off okay All right again you know play with the the numbers play with the entries um, 
uh, in order to be able to get a better feel for it. But you're always keeping a running balance in that uh, allowance for doubt, allowance for uncollectible account. All right. So in the last thing that we need to look at here is the um, what happens if the customer decides to pay off, you know, what was previously written off. Well, you know, it's basically the same as doing the direct write-off method, except we're not using the bad debt expense account. We're using the allowance account, okay? Um, because that of, you know, using it up here, okay? You know, that was part of our estimate. So we have to put the uh, amount back, you know, how much that customer owes us. We have to put it back on our accounts receivable. So there's our debit. And we credit something else. Well, we're crediting the allowance because that is what gives us our net accounts receivable. And then, um, you know, we show the payment in cash. And again, you know, you have to show the two entries in order to be able to leave a trail for any uh, third person coming back into the business, you know, an auditor, you know, a CPA, investor, whatever, so that they can, um, you know, be able to follow that paper, paper trail and know what accounts were all affected. Okay, so um, you know these, uh, you know this exhibit seven eight is a good exhibit for make you know realizing for making the journal entries um, using the direct write-off method. It's relatively straightforward. The allowance method gets a lot more confusing because you're always going you know. You can make the adjusting entry and say, OK, I need this amount here and I write it off. And if somebody, you know, um, when I go and determine that this customer should be actually written off, um, you know, then I can make that entry. And of course, if the customer pays, these are the entries I'm going to make. But realize that in that allowance account, OK, um, when you're looking at the end of a, an accounting period, you're going to have a figure, whatever it is, $2,000 that you're going to write off to allowance, which is fine. But then at the end of the next accounting figure, uh, accounting period, you're going to say, okay, um, let's say this one's only supposed to be 1500. Okay. Well, you don't use that. You don't say, ah, oh, that's what my journal entry is going to be. Okay. No, what you have to do is you have to say, okay, what was my previous balance of uh, 2000 and if it's if I'm only supposed to have a balance of 1500 well what's the difference between the two so that I can get to that new balance at the end of this accounting period in this case here that's a debit of 500 okay and that's what you're going to use um, in order to make the uh, adjusting journal entry and then of course in the next month March if you're supposed to have you know 4500 right well, if I had $1,500 at the end of February and now I need $4,500, well, then that means I have to make an adjusting entry of $3,000, not the $4,500, all right? So that's the kind of wrinkle in the scheme of things, and that's what makes it a little bit more uh, difficult for students because they can they realize what their accounts receivable is. They sort of say, okay, this is how much my you know estimate should be using the percent of sales method or the aging method. But what they don't take into consideration is, is that the allowance for doubtful account or allowance for uncollectible account is a running balance, right? And so you have to do this one extra step in the math in order to determine the amounts for the journal entry. Okay, so I hope that, that uh, you understood that. Um, I know I was hammering that again and again and again in the previous video for the allowance. Yep. And... Um, you know, I'm kind of like going over it again in this video for the difference between the two journal entries. Um, so, you know, I hope you got that. If, if not, pause, watch the video again. And if you're still not understanding it or you're not understanding it from the textbook or working through the problems, feel free to contact an instructor, okay? Um, in the next video, we'll talk about the percent of sales method. And then the following video, the aging method in order to be able to determine how much we're actually going to make an adjustment for the allowance method, okay?